What's cracking, guys? Omar Isaf here, back with another video, back with the long hair, because around here, we care, we care a lot, we care a lot about training, we care a lot about the things we regret. Training mistakes I've made, I've made several. I'm not talking about beginner mistakes, I'm actually talking about programming here, I'm talking about trying to get stronger. This year in 2017, I have become the strongest I've ever been, and also the most jacked. I hit uh, a deadlift PR, I hit a bench PR, I hit an overhead press PR, my total has gone up 30, 40 pounds, I know what I'm doing, I'm making some gains, so I've had time to reflect on the years before, and what would I change, what can I say to you guys in order for you to get more gains and you know, honestly not make the mistakes I've made, uh, probably the number one mistake might be not training calves. We're gonna find out how he gets these calves so big. No, 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 uh, actually I don't regret not training calves at all. The big mistake that I've made, quite frankly, uh, I'm going to link in the description, Garrett Blevins made a great video on this, talking about low debt fatigue programs or high debt fatigue programs. Essentially, what this means is leaving a little something something in the tank, not becoming addicted to that rush, as the band Mr. Big would say. And what I mean by that, well, simply put, when things are going well, and I've had this happen several times, uh, first years ago when I hit 545 pounds on the deadlift uh, in the Green Ranger outfit, that year my deadlift had increased by 140 pounds. And so sometimes we want results yesterday. So you get a PR, you want the next PR, and you want it to occur basically almost in that same time frame, if not sooner. So let's say it took you two years to go from 400 pounds to 500 pounds on the deadlift. Well, from 500 pounds to 600 pounds, you're like, all right, I know it's probably gonna take more like three years, but I wanna do it in two years. And so what ends up happening, I am 100% guilty of this, we push the volume maybe a little bit too much, push the intensity maybe a little bit too much. I'm not saying that high volume is bad, not at all. I'm a huge proponent of it, but I'm saying burning, you know, right at that top, right at that top portion for myself, I didn't give my body enough time to adapt to those changes. And there is something to be said about two different points. In the first place, allowing that new strength level to kind of take place, settle, and adapt your technique around that. Here's what I mean, if you're constantly pushing the PRs and you're pushing above 80%, and let's say you're pushing an RP9 or you're going a little too heavy, a little too often, probably you're gonna start having some kinks in your form and technique, and then they'll carry all the way through into your max effort when you PR. And if you take no time to solidify that new strength, you're probably just gonna ingrain that pattern. So what ended up happening is my deadlift years ago got a little uglier, got a little uglier as I was lifting more weight. I didn't take the time, I wasn't patient. What did we learn from the tortoise versus the hare? The tortoise won that motherfucking race and that is the person you wanna emulate. You want long, sustained PRs. I know it doesn't sound sexy, okay, I know that. Speaking of someone that always wants to go fast, like in Talladega Nights when they ask like who wants to go fast and Ricky Bobby says he wants to go fast, that's me. So this is hard, not for me to say, but it's hard for me to actually practice for myself. I've done it this year, however. It only took injuring my SI and basically being out of the game for like 16 or 18 months to finally say, you know what? <laughs> I'll dial it back a bit. And so this year, uh, you guys saw the 365 bench. Normally when I hit PRs, they look like max attempts, meaning that I probably couldn't have lifted a pound, two pounds, three pounds more. They were an RP 10. Uh, but this year you notice on the deadlift PR, on the bench press PR, I left a few pounds in the tank. And taking a big, big lesson from the Russians when it comes to you see their PRs often, and that's not only technical proficiency, you know, where they're so good at lifting the weight, they make it look easy even though it's incredibly hard, they're still going to maybe 97%, 98%, leaving a little something in the tank. And that's why this year, uh, you know, there's a few different things. One, the bench press, I hit 365, could I have hit 370? Hell yeah. Will I probably do this year? Yeah, maybe, but I'm looking at that sustained long-term progress. I wanna be lifting a year from now, two years from now. There's too many of bro my bros, too many of my friends, too many people that I know, when we chase those PRs, we wanna be great and we wanna be as strong as we can be and it's a more risky route if you're really pushing things that you get injured and then you have to dial it back. And that's why this year the squat, my squat was looking great for a 500 pound high bar squat. I already squatted 500 pounds low bar, 500 pounds high bar would be huge. Probably my low bar is like 520, 525. 
and I definitely had all the pieces together to hit that. I can totally hit it. But you know what? I had a little bit of a groin issue where things were getting tight. It wasn't feeling the best. Rather than old Omar saying, fuck it, go, bro, just go for it. <laughs> Train past the pain. And then getting injured, I dialed the back. So I'm going to retool things, uh, rework uh, the squat, the pattern, just work on that groin, get it fixed, and then come back stronger, smash that 500 pounds. Honestly, maybe even go for 510. It's going to take longer being smarter with your training rather than kind of just being a cowboy and going right in there. But that longer term process, it's more sustainable. You can do it over an extended period of time. It's all about that long process. I look at my boy, Sarah Mike. I look at a lot of lifters that are fantastic lifters that have to go through and we all go through these things where we get banged up. It's just a process. It's in the nature of lifting, but we want to lift for a long period of time. So it's about that long game. Take your time. Don't worry about it. If your bro's getting stronger than you, if you maybe have a meet coming up or you want to hit that specific number, but maybe things are breaking down, you're feeling just all that extra volume, all that uh, extra rep that you're doing and just kind of beating up your body take a little bit of time away and come back your body will thank you for it guys i know it's not the sexy response i know it's maybe not the things that some young yolos want to hear trust me i ignored this message for a long period of time but if you want to be in this game for a while and i certainly do i want to be that jacked grandpa then you have to take a smart look at training at what you're doing i'm gonna hit some more prs in the future i'm the strongest i've ever been i'm also the most jacked it's only going to continue to increase like a fine wine you should get better with time that's what i wanted to say in this video today my biggest training regret or mistake is pushing the envelope a little bit too much a little too often paying the price then having to take some time off all that extra time off if i was just a tortoise taking my time slowly chipping away not being greedy with prs i would have hit even more prs what do you think what is your biggest training regret let me know in the comment section below thank you so much for watching the video if you like the video i'm looking right at you make sure to like the damn video and i'll see all you guys my rascals in that next video peace